Marhaba. Right now we're going to continue talking about the masdar. We started talking about the masdar in our first video, and we remember that it kind of has a verbal noun meaning similar to the ing form in English, right? Uh, to think, I think, you think, he thinks, thinking, this thing, this idea, this act in the abstract that is thinking, that's our masdar. And as we talked about in the first video, masdar forms, those verbal noun forms for form one verbs, the simplest verbs that we have uh, that are pretty much the triconsonantal root, like kataba, yektub, are going to be highly variable, right? So we have kataba, yektub, and then another form, one verb, amala, yamal, and the masdar is al kitaba for kataba yaktub to write amal yamal al amal work working this thing that is work right so patterns are very variable in form 1 and the best thing to do is just learn those masdar forms as you're picking up new verbs new vocabulary the nice thing about the derived forms is that if we recognize a verb's pattern it's wasn remember that word wasn Wow, Zanun. If we can recognize the wasn of that verb and fit it into one of the derived verb patterns, then virtually 100% of the time we're going to know how to derive that verb's masdar form. We don't need to play a guessing game or go look it up in the dictionary. Uh, we can derive it fairly mechanically. Traditionally, those derived verb forms are uh, numbered in Roman numerals from 1 to 10. We covered one last time and there'll be a separate video on 6 through 10. Uh, there are a few others but they tend to be very archaic so unless you have a passion for very old texts, pre-Islamic poetry, things like that, you're highly unlikely to encounter them in, uh, in any modern context. Uh, when we're talking about verbs and mustars in the abstract, we also tend to use the letters fa, ein, lam as sort of placeholders, right? These are templates right here. We've got forms, but they don't really have meaning necessarily, right? So that fa, ein, lam is just waiting for us to use a real juther, right? That triconsonantal root that we have in a meaningful word to swap it out. They are holding the place until we can use a real word. So let's take a few examples. Here we have, for example, some present tense verbs. We have yudarris, a verb that means to teach, right? And we have this shadda, and we have these vowels, dhamma, fatha, kasra. So our first task is to identify, hmm, what is the wazn, what is the derived form of this verb? And as we can see here, present tense verb, we have a dhamma, fatha, kasra, and that shadda there. So, we can identify it as a form two verb. Now, yudarris, this verb, he teaches in the present tense. I want to talk about teaching in the abstract, right? So now I have to put it into the masdar form. So here we have a template, right? Where fa, ain, lam are holding, just holding down the camp for my real jother, the meaningful root that I want to, to sink into this masdar form. So I identify that here, right? I know that the ya yeah is just part of the conjugation of the verb, and I've got one, two, three letters left, which makes things easy, right? And then I want to put them in order in the place of fa, ein, lam. So I'm going to Take the extra, alif lam, because a mustard is usually definite, right? That's not really part of the form. Uh, now I've got that ta, I can see there. And now I'm going to insert the first letter, letter of my real jother. Ta, d, second letter of the jother, ra. And then we see we have a ya yeah here, but right, that's just part of the form, part of the wasn, the pattern. And ri, and then the last letter of my jother, my root, is sin for tadris, at tadris, 
teaching the ing, the abstract idea form, right? Here we have another verb, يساعد. He helps, the verb to help, conjugated in the present tense for a third person masculine singular. Again, first task is to identify the wazn. Okay, I've got a dhamma here and I've got this long alif. And as we can see here, form three has a dhamma over the, uh, the conjugation prefix and a long alif. So, okay, I've identified it as form three. Now I need to think about my jadr, my root. I know that that's the conjugation and that alif looks to be part of the form. So I've got sin, ayn, dal. And now I want to pop those into the mustar form in the place of fa, ayn, lam, which are just, just building blocks, right? So, alif, lam, oh, and I've got a mim as part of the form of the mustar, right? First letter of my root, sin, and then that alif, is just part of the mustar form again. Musa, Aida, and we see we have a ta marbuta just as part of the form on the end. So al musaada, helping or help, right? The thing, the idea that is helping. Another example, yumkin, form four, uh, meaning to be possible, right? We know that it's form four because we have that dhamma here and then the kasra here, right? As we acquire more vocabulary words, it will be easier to identify these. You'll have sort of a bigger toolbox of verbs to, uh, to sort of compare the, the music of these words to, but, uh, but pay attention to the vowels, right? And be sure to get the vowels accurately when you're studying, when you're memorizing. That's going to help you with this process as well. So yumkin, we've identified as form four. And now we want to put it into its mustar form to try to talk about possibility in the abstract. Alif lam. Okay, and we've got that. Alif. Im. Mim kaf. Alif. No, you don't need to use different colors in real life. It's optional, but this is just to illustrate what is the exoskeleton? What's the template? And what is this meaningful root that we've derived from here, right? Final example, form five, yetadhakkar. He remembers. We want to talk about memory, remembering the idea. Form five, we're going to need to put it in here. We've got our alif lam. We've got an extra ta that's part of the mustar form for form five. And then we've got fa, ayn, lam, so that's easy enough. The, kaf, ra. But notice here that we have a shadda with a dhamma over it, right? So we need to be careful to include that in our derivation of the mustar. Attadakkur, right? Otherwise, it might sound like conjugated first person present tense. Attadakkur, I remember. You need to hear that shadda with the dhamma over it. At to know that we're talking about the abstract idea of memory.